I have attached to the system two CB15 boards and a DB9 male to female cable using a an HVX21 tester that has a four wire and capacitance measurement capability built in. We won't use those but uh, that's the model that we're using at the moment for this demonstration. I'm going to click learn cable and you can see that we have a simple DB9 male to female represented in the match data area. If we were just going to do a low voltage test, I just click test cable or press the test button on the tester to make a measurement. And here we have the netlist displayed. We could also, of course, show the graphic, wiring graphic, but the netlist is what I'd like to show at the moment. And you can see the resistance values appear here. To conduct a high pot test, what I'm going to do is first enable a high voltage, which is done by checking this button. And you can see the settings that are presently uh, invoked. You will also notice that the high voltage capability is disabled. In order to enable it, I must press a black button on the control panel of the tester. It says HV enable. I've done that now and high voltage is enabled. Before we actually start the test, what I want to do is have a closer look at the way these parameters are set. So I'm going to click this little yellow checkbox, or rather uh, pencil, at the top. And here we have our high voltage control panel. What I would like to point out at the moment are the two tests that I have requested the system perform first a full DC test and then following that immediately an AC test. Uh, the voltage I've selected is 500 volts DC for the full DC test. The current limit is the maximum amount of current we would allow to flow before we consider an insulation breakdown to have occurred. The insulation resistance limit we're setting at 100 mega ohms. These are all adjustable parameters. For the AC test, we want 500 volts AC. Here we are allowing a maximum current of 1000 microamps or 1 milliamp at an insulation or isolation resistance of 1 mega ohm. We're testing at 60 hertz and uh, we have a ramp up and ramp down controls. We'll use the maximum permissible, which is 5000 volts per second up and down, and then a 1000 millisecond dwell time on the high voltage. So I'm going to click OK to accept this and I'm now going to run the test. Uh, you may hear relays clicking in the background. Let's find out. You can see the test progress window appearing. It very quickly did the, the low voltage test. It's working now on the DC test and now it's switched to AC and is performing the AC test. And now we're finished and the results are shown in the test data area. You'll notice that everything passed. We have a, this is the column that shows the DC test passing every time and then this one represents the AC test. It's a little icon that just shows green if it's past the limits and red if it has not. There are two ways a system can fail. It can have an insulation breakdown which is immediately stops the voltage, um, doesn't finish the dwell time, or it can finish the dwell time but you have an insulation resistance which is less than the desired amount. So for DC we can see here the actual leakage current measured in this column for every wire and this is the actual DC voltage obtained. This is not simply copying the set voltage into this column but we're remeasuring what the system is producing and putting it in this column. And this is the isolation resistance, the same as insulation resistance, and that is obtained by taking the obtained voltage, the red back voltage, and dividing it by the insulation, uh, by the leakage, and that gives us the insulation resistance. So you see here we have some very high values. I had only set it to a 100 mega ohm limit, 
Uh, this one is 956 meg ohms. This is almost 7 gig ohms, and you can see it all the way down. Here, this one shows that the leakage was too high to be measured. In other words, the leakage measurement limit on this instrument is 50 nanoamps, or 0.05 microamps, and we couldn't even measure that much leakage. So this was a this particular wire was very good. For AC, it's a similar idea. Um, this is the actual voltage that's being uh, read back from the system. We have the leakage current measured and the isolation voltage that is computed. So it's certainly well within the limits that we have. Well, let's have a look now at the graphic. You'll see it's exactly the same. We can also highlight on wires and you can see the properties if there were any special ones for that.